today on Papa's Projects, just updating you, we have this 12 kilowatt inverter, low frequency off grid connected, and we only have 22 panels on this thing right now. And with those 22 used 250 watt poly panels, I'm able to start my three and a half ton or my four ton main house air conditioner heat pump and right now we have the three and a half ton running upstairs we have that thing set at 67 degrees right now and with just that few panels we are running that at 51 volts on our 48 volt battery we have 50 amps coming in 2.61 kilowatts of power coming in and down below we are at 24% load and so we only have our panels coming in are right around 90 around 100 volts coming in off those 22 so we're keeping this charged while we're running that and when I run that four ton that uses about 60 amps and I believe we said this one was using around 50 amps 40 50 amps just depending on how hot it is outside so let's go outside outside we have this three and a half ton main house. So you can see it's connected in there to the house and it runs up to the attic to the A coil. Um, we have two air conditioners at the three and a half ton and that is a four ton. So right now, this three and a half ton is running off of solar. The way we did that was we had dedicated lines running over here that could run 220, 230, 240. And so we ran a line over here and we put in an AC disconnect box. So on this AC disconnect, we have a fuse in the solar one for upstairs, we labeled it. And we ran that line up to the grid you can see we don't have the fuse in there so we only have one fuse to use between solar and the grid so it's either in the solar or it's in the grid but it can't be in both what we did for this upstairs four ton was the same thing but we used different um, AC disconnect boxes so that you can't use the same type of fuse handle. Let's see. Over here, I'm trying to get this lid off. There we go. So over here, we have a fuse like that, but up here, we have a totally different fuse that will not fit in there. So you can't try to put the fuse from the upstairs with the downstairs and short out between the solar and the grid. It's one or the other. So on this one, we have, this is the grid power. And then we also have the same exact box for our downstairs solar upstairs grid so that fuse is either in the grid or it's in the solar but I only have one fuse out here so it can't be in both at the same time once again the same thing with the upstairs the fuse handle is either in the solar or it's in the grid so all we have to do is this one's running this one right now so if we take this fuse, 
put it in our fuse handle over here, shut it down, and we have the ability to lock all these up so nobody can get in there and mess with them. So we can close that one, put the lid on this one, and this wasn't really that hard to wire up this way. So the power is always on, on the grid, on this one and on this one. But the way that we ran the wiring in there, unless there's a fuse in there, it's not um, a completed circuit. It's an open circuit. So it's the same thing with the solar. If it's not in there, it's an open circuit. But what we also did with the solar was we put a second AC disconnect in the garage so that we have a double uh, disconnect on this when I'm working on it for the solar. So I can always go over and hit the breaker in the main panel to turn the grid off, but I wanted to put in a double uh, safety feature for me there. But um, this thing, I can fire up this main air conditioner three and a half ton at around 7.15, 7.30 in the morning and run this till about 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. And the way we run it, nobody's home except for me during the day. And we don't go upstairs that often until we go to bed. We're downstairs all the time. We have this thing set at 67 degrees. So it gets the rooms chilled down to about you know, 62 to 64 degrees. So when we turn it off at 5.30, right now it's in the mid 90s during the day and the middle 60s at night. When we turn this off, we have our thermostat upstairs set at 76 degrees. And it never, from the time we turn it off at 5.30 to the time we get up the next morning, it never goes below, or I mean above 73 or 74 degrees upstairs because we chilled it down so much during the day. So we never run our grid. We switch it over to the grid for the power for this at night, but it never kicks on because it just stays so cool for the 10 hours, 10, 10 and a half hours during the day running that upstairs that it does not have to turn out at all. Now, the other thing that we did was we have to keep our attic nice and cool. We have two solar attic fans up there. And the way that I have those connected, they're also um, a hybrid. So you can plug these things in to the uh, grid in the garage. I run them on uh, um, solar during the day. And then when there's no sun on them, I'll switch it over and plug it in. And they only use 50 watts of power each. So, but they will keep my attic uh, without either, without those things going up there, my attic on a 95 degree day would be about 135 to 150 degrees. The way I have it set up right now, and I also have something else going on up there, my attic stays below 90 degrees during the day when it used to be 135 to 150 degrees. Now, right now, actually, I have just the 16 solar panels running that three and a half ton air conditioner. And these are those uh, used poly panels that uh, have snail trails in them. There's a blemish in those but um now later on after oh 10 10 30 in the morning these will have full sun on these six panels over here which will also be 
connected to that. And we have six panels over there that are running the other inverters. Those are on the 5,000 watt MPP. But it's pretty amazing that we can run that three and a half ton air conditioner pretty much just off of those 16 250 watt poly panels that were used getting a pretty good output on that we uh, also have our pool heated up to 86 to 89 degrees so the other day we connected one day we might be able to get this up, but we're gonna have to go get some six gauge stranded wire to run over to this thing because it's just, it's got two 50 amp breakers in that breaker box. These are 30 amps, two 30 amps for that one and two 30 amps for that. So I'm gonna need a, a heavier gauge wire to start that 12 and a half ton up. But we use that 12 and a half ton to get our temperature in the pool from 70 degrees up to 89 degrees. And then during the day, we use this, we start this up around 8, 8.30 in the morning and run this thing. Sometimes I only run it till noon and I lose four, four or five degrees overnight on the top foot of the water in the pool. And then by circulating it and having that pool cover on there, I can recoup that within about four or five hours using just that little heat pump. And see, that's only half in the uh, sun right now, half of it's in the shade. But just filtering that, that half that gets that, I'm pulling that hot water in and recirculating it in the pool. But by noon, it'll be like 88, 89 degrees, and that's where we like it. That's the perfect temperature for us. We're older. <laughs> we like it hotter in the pool. Colder in the house, hotter in the pool. So that little heat pump works great. Now, by the end of May, I won't even be using that thing anymore. But when I ran that 220-volt pool heater that cost me seven dollars on just one day to drop to the increase the temperature in the pool by 20 degrees and then i never had to use that after that and for the last uh, two three weeks i've been running just this little one a half to three quarters of the day and that's on solar so this runs off of solar now during the day, this runs off of solar, three and a half ton. That four ton runs off of solar. That one ton runs off of solar. If I want to use it, I don't need to. Actually, that one is running downstairs right now. I'm just running one mini split downstairs on one ton while I'm running that three and a half ton. And that, it's going to be 95 again today. But by the end of the day at 5, 530, my house Right now it's 73 degrees downstairs and it's 70 upstairs. But downstairs will be about 68 degrees and upstairs will be about 60, 66 to 68 degrees. So it'll cool the house down completely. When we turn those things off, there's no air movement and it keeps the house chilled overnight. <laughs> it's like a cooler box. <laughs> so this jacuzzi pool pump is running right now off of solar almost everything during the day is running off of solar now we even have these ceiling fans that will turn on and run those uh, during the day to keep the flies and the heat um, out of here so anyways I just wanted to give you an update we got both of those main air conditioner is able to run to start up and run now this one i think i think i had to hook up another 12 panels to get this to be able to fire up 
But like I said, I think if I add another four batteries to my battery bank, and I'm just using AGMs, 100 amp hours. So if I put eight batteries on there, two sets of 48, I should be able to fire up both of these air conditioners at the same time. I should have enough power to do that with a current draw. So right now it starts up either one fine, no problem whatsoever. Um, but it won't start up the way I have it in there right now. It's not going to start both at the same time. Just too much of a draw on that four ton. Um, that thing draws, eh, like I said, 10, 15, maybe 20 more amps than that three and a half ton. But our downstairs is much bigger. And actually, in hindsight now, being able to run our air conditioner all day long off of solar for upstairs, we really don't even run this in anymore it's uh just doesn't need to run the um mini split downstairs just one of those is enough to so right now we're 73 degrees downstairs and it is about 85 it's hard to see, but it's about 85 degrees outside right now. So. In the garage, again, we, uh, if you're new to the channel, we also run this heat pump dryer that only uses 16 to 1800 watts and this these are both electrolux and this is an electrolux washing machine that's brand new not even a year old we run both of those in the garage and on this heat pump dryer there is no vent to this at all we uh this is a ventless so what it does is it draws the air in this vent and throws it out on this side and it's about 90 95 degree air that comes out but we're running this air conditioner over here and it's 220 volt 18,000 BTU it is 75 degrees in the garage right now when it's 85 outside but we insulated our walls in here we insulated our our doors on the garage with uh, two layers of one and a half foam insulation and it's two inch insulation on the walls over here but on this wall over here we have cabinets we didn't insulate anything on but that really doesn't get any sun this is the interior of the house on that side so we didn't need to insulate just needed to insulate that long stretch of wall and the garage door so probably what we'll do is we will have to take like the battery bank down there since it's right there disconnect it to this one and we will connect those two so that we have two 48 volt battery banks going into this 12 kilowatt low frequency off-grid inverter and we should have enough there to be able to start both air conditioners at the same time. So we'll work on doing that over the next couple of days. That's pretty much it. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And we hope you have a truly wonderful and very blessed day. See you soon.